In this lesson, we'll explore how private IP version 4 addresses used in building and a public address required for internet communications can be joined together with a software function called network address translation. In the previous lesson, we covered private IP addresses and why these were preferable to use on an in building network. We also noted that if any of the users on the private network want to receive packets from the internet, a public IP address is required. The question we explore in this lesson is how to enable internet communications for all of the users in building without having to rent a public IP address for every user. A solution is to use a network address translator, a NAT. A NAT is software running on the customer edge router, a device placed between the in-building network where private addresses are being used and the internet where public addresses are used. The NAT works alongside DHCP functions also running on the customer edge router. On the public side, a DHCP client gets one public IP address from an internet service provider. On the private side, a DHCP server assigns private IP addresses to the computers in building. Between the public side and the private side, the NAT performs a network address translation, changing the IP address on the packet and relaying the packet to the other side. When a computer on the private side initiates communications with a server, it populates the source IP address field in the packet header with its private address and the destination IP address field with the public address of the server. The packet is then transmitted in a MAC frame to the computer's default gateway, which is the customer edge router. That's the device that's performing the NAT function. The NAT changes the source IP address from the private address of the sender to the public IP address of the NAT, or the customer edge router, and then transmits the packet in a frame on the public network, the internet. The internet server, of course, uses the source address in the packet it receives as the destination address to answer back to the client. Therefore, it'll send the response back address to the NAT. When the NAT receives the packet, it changes the destination address in the packet received from the internet to the private IP address of the appropriate computer and then transmits the packet in a MAC frame to that computer. One question that arises is, how does the NAT know what computer on the private network a packet received from the internet is intended for? It turns out that the NAT uses the Layer 4 header to keep track of things. The Layer 4 header, that's TCP or UDP, begins with two octets that are called the source port and then two octets for the destination port. These fields are used to indicate which application on a computer the message is being sent from and to. What the NAT does is it selects an arbitrary or fake port number to identify a computer on the private network and records this port number against the private address in a table. When a packet is transmitted to the internet, the NAT records the actual source port number, then changes the source port value to the fake port number. When the reply from the server comes back from the internet, it has the fake port number in the destination port field of the Layer 4 header. The NAT uses this to look up the correct private IP address and the correct port number and enter those values in the destination address and destination port number fields, thus relaying the incoming packet to the correct computer on the private network. Network address translation provides a number of advantages. First, a NAT allows multiple computers in building to share a single internet address and a single internet connection. Second, a NAT provides a truly always-on connection to the internet. Services like DSL and cable modem are described as always-on because they're always connected at the physical layer. The modems have always finished their training. 
But they don't provide always on it the network layer, because DHCP has to be run every time the attached device restarts to get a new IP address assigned. When a NAT is inserted in the story, it's the thing that runs DHCP to get the public IP address. So if the NAT is never powered off, the site will always have a public IP address assigned, and thus a connection to the internet always ready for immediate use. A third advantage of a NAT is that it shields machines from attacks from the internet. Since a private IP address is not reachable from the internet, there's no way for a machine on the internet to initiate communications to a machine on the private network. The only device exposed to the internet is the NAT. And normally the NAT is not running on a computer running Windows, and so attackers have a greatly diminished chance of finding a vulnerability to exploit compared to connecting a computer running Windows naked onto the internet. Devices that perform this function are available in industrial strength versions from companies like Cisco. Hardware devices to do this are also available for about 20 bucks from companies like Linksys for use on a DSL or cable modem connection. They often include both an Ethernet switch and an 802.11 wireless LAN access point for the private network side. Most ISPs now provide the customer edge router with NAT function integrated in a device that also includes the DSL or cable modem that they supply. In this lesson we covered network address translation and understood how computers assigned a private IP address on an in-building network can share a public IP address and internet communications.